Okay, today we're going to be learning how to use Pixlr.com, which is an online photo editing software, which is very, very similar to Adobe Photoshop. So if you don't have access to Photoshop for whatever reason, we can use Pixlr, um, and it's genuinely like very easily accessible uh, for anyone. So what you'll notice here is the homepage to Pixlr.com, and we want to use Pixlr E. Okay, so if I click it, it will open another tab. What we're going to look at doing is we are going to open an image. Now, I'm going to teach you some basics today, and what I'd like you to do is I'm going to run you through four or five different um, four or five different options or things that you can do using the tools, and I'd like you to try and follow along or to do it in different stages with an image that you have taken or an image that you have downloaded from the internet. Okay, for today, um, as we continue with this project from home, I'm going to be asking you to use your own images as you are editing them later on. So if we go to open image, um, I'm just going to pull up, uh, let's go that one. So I'm using one that I found from the internet for today. So this is the general layout of what Pixlr looks like. Um, so we have a tab over here called layers and um, over here we've got kind of our image which is in the center and we've got all these tools on the left hand side and we're going to look through a few of these. Now Pix is really really good if you hover over whatever tool it is it will give you the name of the tool and the general description of what the tool does. So the first thing we're going to use is the marquee or the selection tool. And what we're going to try and do is we're just going to try and select an area of the image just to see that we can. And you'll notice when I release the mouse, there's what looks like a small trail of ants walking around. That means anything inside this area is now selected or is editable or whatever we want to do, we can now do to anything in this area. So if I press delete or backspace on a Mac, it will remove that area. If, say for example, I wanted to do some painting using the brush tool, what I could now do is I can paint. And what you'll notice is as I try and go past the area where the uh, selection is, it won't paint anything outside of that area. Okay, so let's really take a step back here. Okay, um, so that is the selection tool, so or the marquee selection tool, which is going to be one of the things that we are experimenting with. Uh, one of the shortcuts you can use is Control D, and that will deselect whatever area is selected. Next tool we're going to use is the crop tool. So the crop tool is over here, um, and we're just going to drag the borders in and have a little bit of a smaller image, so a more focused image on this person's face. So the crop tool, one that you can use there to just make an image a little bit smaller. Uh, one of the other tools that we can use down the side is the eraser tool. Now, the options for the brush and the eraser tool are very, very similar. So if I select the eraser tool, it will tell me I'm using a brush, it will tell me what size it is, and it will give me an option known as opacity. Now, if I click on the brush, it will pull up a range of different options. You can make it bigger if you need to, or much, much smaller, depending on how delicate the work you're doing is. So I'm gonna keep the size relatively around about 76, which if I click off and hover the mouse over the area, will notice is relatively big for what I'm doing. So with this, what I might choose to do is I might try to erase some of the background area. I might try to go quite carefully around the person. Um, now this one is, is a little bit larger than what you'd use if you're trying to do quite delicate work, but it's fine because at the minute we're just experimenting. So it might be that I'm choosing to erase my section here. A little bit of our background, let's just finish in this area here. And what I might choose to do afterwards, so we can experiment with another tool, is I might click on the brush tool. Now the brush tool, if I click on the settings, very, very similar to the one that we just had with the eraser tool, okay? So you can see my brush is relatively similar sized. The colors down here dictate what color I'm using. So at the minute, if I were to paint, I'm using this green color. If I click on that green, it brings me up to a color palette or a color picker tool. So I can say, click on the red, move the selection cursor to a darker red, press okay and now I'm painting red if I choose to paint. Okay, if we go back, so that is the brush and the eraser tool. 
Next up, we are going to look at copying and pasting. So, if I use my selection tool again, I'm going to copy all of the image. So I'm going to drag the mouse over the entirety of the image, I'm going to let it go. So we've got those little ants moving around the box again. If I press Ctrl C and Ctrl V, you'll notice on the layers on the side over here, I now have a, another layer which has been made and it's an exact copy of the one previously. Say for example, what I might do is I might actually choose to take just a selection of this guy's face, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, now I have a new layer again, but it is just this person's face. Okay, so I've copied the man's face there. Now what I can do is, if I make sure I've got the layer selected and the move tool selected, I could move that around if I wanted to. And we'll just delete this one as well. Now, going back to the last thing that we're gonna be looking at, which is the use of layers. Um, we're gonna look at what layers are and what we can use them for over the next few videos. For now, what we're gonna do is try and keep things mostly to the basics. So I'm gonna click on the plus, which is gonna give me an option for adding a new layer. Now what I could do is I could add another image into this. I could add some text and I could write whatever it is that I wanted to write. Um, or what I could do, if I just select off this for a second, I can add an empty layer, which is gonna be what I do now. So I've got an empty layer here. Layer is essentially just a separate part of the image that I'm working on now. So say for example, if I take my brush and I paint over this area here, and later I decide actually I don't really like this. Because I've worked on a layer, I could choose to hide the layer or delete the layer, and it won't have affected the original image. Um, now, with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the selection tool again. I'm going to select all of the image, so I'm going to drag it over all of the space. I'm going to use a paint bucket tool, or a fill tool, which is over here. I'm going to change the colour to a cool blue colour. Let's go with one of these down here. And I'm going to click inside this selection. Now, what that has done is filled this entire layer with that dark blue color, that cool blue color. Now, last thing for today, we're gonna to look at how layers can interact with one another so that we can see our person again. If I right click on this layer, I'm presented with a few more options. If I reduce the transparency, we are able to see the layer that is underneath again, rather than the one that is on top. And if I increase the transparency, I can see less of the layer underneath and more of the blue color. Now, what I want to experiment with before I finish is the blending mode. So if I go on blending mode and click, I'm presented with a few different options. If I go on multiply, we can see that we have a much darker version of the image underneath. Screen, okay, that's a much lighter version. It's almost quite similar to some filters that you can apply over the top of some of your photographs. Overlay. Color dodge. Some of them have a bit more of an extreme effect than others, and if I wasn't using blue but was using red or yellow, for example, this image would look much dif more different. Okay, say for example I go through those, I'm actually quite happy with the color dodge one. What I'd want to do afterwards is just go to File, Save, and I can save the image that I've been experimenting around with. We're going to save it as a JPEG um, because we don't want to do any more editing to it for now. It might be later we experiment with a bit more what a PNG and a PXD file is, but for now I could just save that, download it, and for today that's us finished. Try and move your way through those options so that you're comfortable with them, so that in later videos when I tell you that we need to fill an area in with a colour or copy and paste or adjust something in the layers, you're quite comfortable with that terminology and the things that I'm asking you to do. Hopefully that wasn't too difficult. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.